All right, so Robbie, we're back with more questions. And um, so I'm going to throw a little controver- controversial question at you. Mm-hmm. Supplemental feeding, where do you stand on it? And, and should you do it, not do it? And if you do it, what should you use? In Illinois, where I'm from, I can't use do it at all. Right. I can't supplemental feed. I can't use mineral. I can't use anything. Um, the only the only good thing about that is, is I'm not going broke. Because if I could, <laughs> I'd be going broke. Uh, You're that, saying you would do it if I'm you could. Very, I'm, I'm very highly for it. Yep. Yes. Uh, especially when it comes to the late season and the winter. Uh, giving them deer what they need to get them built back up. You know, a lot of people don't realize, uh, uh, not only, everybody talks about the bucks, but they don't look at all the weight loss the does have. Right. Uh, then little yearlings are only 80 pounds out there. The bucks are running around. They're losing a bunch of weight. Then deer need to get that body built back up. Yes, like in me in my area, I'm doing it with food plots, but I could help them deer out so much more if I could feed them. If I could even put blocks out for them, any kind of supplemental feed. And if I was going to do it, I'd run our rack maker 100% with our granny act blocks. Yep. Uh, now in the spring, I love running our, I love to be able to run our uh, deer and elk pellets. You know, it's a high protein pellet. But if I had only one thing that I could actually put out for them as a supplemental feed, it would be that rack maker feed. Yeah. It, uh, it's almost like ringing the dinner bell when we put it out here. We're allowed to feed as long as it's not. Well, technically in Iowa, you can feed all year as long as you're not hunting over it. Right. Um, but what we'll do here, because this is a hunting farm, we'll usually pull it about the end of August, mm-hmm. but I also feel good because I've ran it from the end of season yep. to August when that nutrition is so important. Yep. So, well, and, and one thing I would like to add, and I know a lot of people get confused on it and everything, but one thing about supplemental feeding that I don't like, and it's not the supplemental feeding part, it's how they do it. Right. Uh, we'll get a lot of people that will get into an area that can supplemental feed and they won't feed the deer at all. And then all of a sudden they look and go, oh my, this is going to be like a negative 40 degree wind chill tomorrow and the next day. I want to go out and dump a bag of feed out for these deer and then not get them anymore. That's worse on that deer than if you didn't feed him at all. Right. You want him to do his natural browse. If you're not going to continue feeding that deer, do not do that in the winter time. Let him just take his natural browse. They'll get through it like they always do. But if you can supplemental feed them and continue doing it through that harsh winter, they're going to be even better. Right. But don't get out there for a week and feed them and think, oh, okay, it's good enough, I'm going to quit now because they will keep coming back to that. They're looking for that high energy, that high fiber, and they're not going to find it. Right. So I think what you're saying is if you're going to supplemental feed to help those deer out, commit. 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 Exactly. Yep. you got, you got to commit. Awesome. I mean, yep, you have to. Guys, check in uh, again next week. We're going to keep hammering Robbie for uh, more of his knowledge.